Well, good morning, Elam Church. How are we feeling this morning? We got a couple people that are excited. Listen, listen. This is a great Sunday. It is Baptism Sunday this morning. Let's give a hand. Let's cheer a little bit. We got 14 people that are proclaiming their relationship with Jesus towards everyone. And it is really just a fantastic Sunday, don't you think? Isn't it beautiful outside? Who, who didn't wear a coat for the first time on a Sunday all year? Yeah, it's a lot of people. That's worth celebrating for. Listen, if you are thankful, can we actually just like, let's start this off right. There's going to be a lot of a celebration. Can we just kind of stand up and get a little bit of excitement in this room? And who's thankful for the nice weather? Let's be honest. It's been cold. Let's hear some cheers. There we go. Who's thankful for anything else? Like, why don't you turn to someone and say, hey, I'm thankful that you're in church this morning. And I'm thankful that you're going to clap with me and sing with me and dance with me. I'm going to pray, and then the worship team's going to take it away. We're going to have a great time this Baptism Sunday. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for you. We are so thankful that you have risen and you have defeated the grave. We are thankful, God, that for the people that are making this amazing decision to declare their love for you in baptism this morning, God, we're thankful for every person in this room. And God, we just thank you so much for everything given us and god we praise you this morning in your holy name we pray amen okay big energy guys wandering into the night wanting a place to hide this weary soul Bag of I try with all my might, I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man.
Crosswell. Let's give him a hand this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much that there really is no one like you. God, we thank you so much that you are sovereign just play like above a all things. Yeah. God, that not only is there no one like you, but God, that you invested that love into all of us. And God, we thank you so much this morning that we can come to a place where we can celebrate you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You guys can grab a seat now. I know normally at this point in the service we have like two or three more songs. And if you're here and you're like, I was just getting into it. I got more in me. That's great. Because later on, as we're baptizing people, yeah. we're going to have an opportunity to worship alongside them and Same celebrate. So I need you guys, upbeat, the, yeah. all that pent-up energy that you've gotten for a couple more songs, make sure that that comes out in celebration later yeah, when we're we baptizing go. people. Does that make sense? You guys with me you on that? A bit of a there we go. Fantastic. Well, hey. My name is Pastor Ben. I'm one of the pastors here. Normally at this point we would dismiss our junior highs, but because this is a very exciting baptism Sunday, we want the, everyone to be in together to be able to see what's going on. If you are new, welcome. And if you want to get more connected, the best thing to do is to fill out a connection card. Now there's a couple ways to do this. There is a card in the pocket in front of you, hopefully. You can fill that out and you can head to our connections booth after the service. Or if you're tech savvy, you can pull out your phone and you can go to our website, go to start here and fill out an online online connection yeah, card there. Right That's yeah. just so we can connect with you and say, hey, how can we as a church walk with you and better serve you? We also do want to take up an offering this morning, but we don't pass the plates. We don't really do that anymore. But there are lots of ways to give. And I just want to say, if you are giving regularly, just thank you for partnering with us in giving. And if you don't know what you're giving to, let me just assure you that it is not just for lights and things like that. It's actually towards life change. It's towards people's lives going one way and turning the other. What a great Sunday to talk about it as we're talking about baptism. That's what we're giving to. That's what we're supporting as a church. It's people that are headed in one direction, and then through God's power and miracles, they turn around and they go another way. So when you give, you can give online, you can give in person, you can text to give, but all that goes towards facilitating life change. I'm going to invite up Pastor Lucas, and he's going to talk about baptism this morning. And we're done. Good job, guys. church. You doing good? Yeah. The, the 9 a.m. was so much louder when I asked him that question, but that's fine. It's all good. It is a great day to be in church for many reasons. Obviously, um, if you're new, uh, welcome here. It's Baptism Sunday. It's a very unique Sunday, special Sunday where we take the whole time to just celebrate and honor and commemorate and, again, be filled with joy about what God has done. And so I, I just want to say already, our baptism candidates, they're mostly sitting right here with their families. We love you guys. Way to go. You're getting in the tank. We, we're with you. We're standing beside you today. Can we show them some love and appreciation? This is a big day, and we're so excited for you. If you, uh, yeah, if this is your first time, or maybe you've even joined us, your family member, someone getting baptized, I just want to share a few kind of stats and numbers with you. We had a great Easter weekend. We had over 3,500 people in our building Friday and Sunday. We had over 600, I think it was 657 or so with kids and team in our kids' rooms. Um, and although numbers are great, my favorite part are the alpha sign-ups. My favorite part of the prayer moments, the stories, the stories of healing, the stories of marriages being rekindled and restored, and hearts being restored. We had an incredible Easter weekend. And I'm so grateful for our team and everything that, yeah, we've done. But... We're not just recapping what happened last week. The, the party is still happening, church. The hope, the joy that we, that we had on Easter Sunday is carried through to this Sunday because, again, today is a special service. It's a Sunday that marks for people a, a significant moment that changed them forever. You know, last, this week all stems from what we talked about last week. If you were with us at all, um, you would have been kind of familiar now with the story of Peter. Peter, a close friend of Jesus, as we talked about last week, he, a quick recap of who he is, if you don't know who Peter is, he's, uh, he was found on a boat fishing, couldn't catch much, but Peter, or excuse me, Jesus called Peter to be a follower of him. He had ministry in his life, he followed Jesus, gave up his profession to just follow Jesus and, and do ministry and see healing, and he made a lot of mistakes along the way. We love to read Peter because it always makes us feel better about our own life, right? But it's true, and, and, but yet, you know, he has this incredible moments of faith. He's like walking on water. He, he calls Jesus the Messiah. He does all of these things. But like I said last week, around a charcoal fire, at the moment where the cross is so 
so in his eyesight, he denies Jesus three times. But, praise God, the resurrection power, Jesus reinstates him. He redeems him. He restores him. He gives him his dignity back. And now Peter is preaching the gospel. He's active. He's, al- he's ready to go. He's calling people back to the resurrection life that he surrendered his life to. And so what... I want to jump into Acts for a moment because as Jesus ascends into heaven, he says one last thing. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching, teaching them to obey everything I've shown you. And by the way, to the end of the age, I will always be with you. And in that moment, Peter's disciples, they, they gather in this room and as they talk and as they pray, the Holy Spirit meets them in such power. And they begin to speak in other tongues and they begin to enjoy the Holy Spirit in a way they never thought possible. They thought their friend and rabbi had left them, and yet now they sense this closeness that cannot be mistaken for almost Jesus himself in the room. And so now Peter is full of boldness. He's full of courage. And a large, a large cr- crowd kind of begins to come together. And in this moment, Peter preaches the gospel. He preaches the whole gospel. He says, this is who Jesus was. He was prophesied about. And then he went to the cross, and we all put him there. And the crowd is moved, and they're, they're absolutely um, changed in the inside. And it says this in Acts 2, starting in verse 37. When the people heard this, the gospel message, when they heard the good news of Jesus, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And this is the instruction that Peter gives. This is what he says. He says, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent, okay, turn from your ways that you're walking now, like Pastor Ben even just mentioned, and be baptized. In other words, believe, and then testify to that faith you have. Be a witness to that faith you have. I don't know if you know this, church, but our world needs our testimony. I don't know if you know this, church, but your story, if you belong to Jesus, if you love Jesus, it's not something you just take and put in your pocket and hold close here and don't talk about it. I'm talking, it's just, it's just for me. It's just, it's just a personal thing. No, your story is not your own. Let me, let me be so honest with you. Your story of redemption and resurrection power is a must-see story. You ever see a blockbuster, like you're, you're at the movies and it's, a trailer comes up and it's like, the must-see blockbuster film this summer. And you're like, that looks terrible, you know? I ain't seeing that. Listen, your story needs to be heard. It's a testimony, not even just for the whole world. Maybe I'm over-dramatizing this. For this community, for our city, for your group of friends, for who you work with, for the people you're close with, they need your story of complete and total turnaround. They need your testimony. Church, we don't golf clap at Elam Church. So either you're going to clap or you got to clap, okay? Come on, somebody. For goodness sakes. I just... Don't hold your story quietly. And then we start golf clapping. They said a golf course. This is a church full of life, full of salvation, full of the gospel, still cutting to the heart of people, recognizing that we need a Savior. And today we celebrate those who recognize the goodness of God in their life and say, I don't care who knows it, but I want the world to see. I want the world to see. I want the world to see. That Jesus loves me, and I love him. What is baptism? If you're new to church or your first time, again, you've been invited today. Baptizo is this kind of Greek word. It just really means fully immersed. It's to cleanse by dipping or submerging. It's this kind of, um, to be cleansed with water. This was a normal practice for many. Even ancient Jews, they had this practice in different ways. And John the Baptist baptized uh, Jesus himself. This happened before Jesus, but something differently marks us today than than those stories. Our baptism is represented by Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the transformative work and power in our life. Baptism signifies our union with Christ, our obedience to Him, our faith now, but also a commitment to say, for the rest of my life, I follow Jesus. Christian baptism illustrates the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And it signifies in the believer our death to sin and new life in him. Church, when you have been saved by Jesus, you have been made new. And that is good news. Let me say it like this. I think this makes the most sense. It's an easy way to understand. Baptism is an outward expression 
of the inward transformation. Baptism, right, is the declaration of the salvation that has happened inside your soul. Christ's transforming power has done something in us that now we must speak about it. We must talk about it. We must share about it. Baptism is the outward expression of the inward transformation of Christ and what he has done in us. The wonder working power. It symbolizes freedom and transformation. It's a powerful moment to say, I ain't turning back. I'll never forget, I got to baptize this, this youth girl way back in the day, and I was just saying to her, do you love Jesus? And she said, of course, you know, I love Jesus, Pastor. And I was like, do you know that it's his grace that saves you and nothing else? Nothing else. It's not your works, it's his work on the cross that saves you. And she said, yes, of course. And I said, and do you, do you want to follow him for the rest of your life? And she said, Pastor, you see all those people out there? They're all watching this. There's no turning back now. <laughs> and I just love the way she said it. It was so sweet and honest, but like, there's no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus with everything that I have. And there's no other direction to go. And this isn't like an odd Christian practice. If, if I'm being honest, this is an ordinance. It's a commandment from the Lord. It's important. But we as a community, we celebrate and commemorate many things. There are significant markers in everyone's life that we take a time to celebrate, to witness, to testify to. Uh, it could be a birthday, an anniversary. It could be something even a graduation. There's many things that we say we pause everything else to just sit there and celebrate and commemorate. Our kids' birthdays are February, March, and April, but it's like within like a six or seven week span. And it's the worst sometimes. It's like crazy prepping. It is. It's hard to have little birthday parties and all these things. It's, it's always wild. We just, we're almost through it. This is, it's our, we're almost through these four months, and then there's nothing until like October. And it's hard. It's a lot. You get the kids ready, and their things, and they're going. And I'm saying it's a lot, but Trina really does most of it. But I, like, it is a lot. But what's up with this thing? Have you heard this phrase, birthday week? Oh, so you're the ones that did this. Birthday, birthday month. It's birthday. I had a buddy say, well, I'm like, what do you know for your birthday? He's like, oh, we're going to Hawaii for two weeks. <laughs> what? He's like, what do you know for yours? I'm like, I'm going to work. Like, I don't know. Like, what's up with, and all those people are like, that, that young generation, they're selling. No, but it's true, right? Like, the birthday week? Get over yourself. Gosh. <laughs> Come on. Who's got the money for it? Like, I just, it's funny, but like, we extend it, right? It's a funny thing. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot of celebration. Like, you get one day, or you get like family party and friends thing. That's it. In our house, at least. I, I think so, but maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? It's a lot of, it's a lot of celebration, but we do it because it matters and people are important to us, right? So I tease it, but I, I get it. Like, you want to commemorate and celebrate this person or this anniversary or this graduation or this significant marker or whatever it may be. I, I'm not big on social media. It's not my favorite thing. I've said that before. I'm not saying you can't be on I'm just saying for me, it's just not something I love. But there's one time a year where I will post about my wife because she's awesome and she deserves to be celebrated and she puts up with me. And that's a big deal, okay? It's a lot to handle. Okay, okay, relax. I'm not that bad. <laughs> Trina's like, amen, everybody. But it's true, she's an incredible woman of God whom I love so much. And every chance I get, I should speak to her intelligence and her wonder and, her, and all the things she does well and her talent and her beauty and all these things, of course. So of course I want to celebrate that and post that. And we should take moments in our life to celebrate and commemorate the things that matter. And if that's the case about birthdays and anniversaries, why would we not, as believers and the church, celebrate and party and enjoy and join in with heaven when the most significant marker in our life, I was dead in my sin, but now I am alive, made new in Jesus. Why would we not celebrate that and mark that and say, listen, I went from a spiritual death to a spiritual life. I went from no hope to new hope. I went from nothing to having my life in with Jesus, life and life to the full, everything changed, black and white to color, whatever it is. Something is changing, so we should celebrate. Paul writes it like this to the church in Rome. He says in Romans 6, Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death 
in order that just as Christ was raised from, the, raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And if we have been united with him, like this in his death, we will most certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that the old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. And jumping to verse 11, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Do you see it, church? We have been made new. We've been made new. We were walking one way and God changed everything. In baptism, we, we dramatically, I would say, portray what happens spiritually when we receive Christ Jesus. That our sin went down. Like in baptism, you'll see people go down in the tank, and yet we are made new. We come alive. Our sin stays in the, the tomb with the Lord. Like, He took our sin. We preached on a Good Friday. We preached on it on Sunday. And again, we say today, but praise be to God, in His resurrection, as we receive Him, we are free and alive in Christ. Where there is sin, pain, and death, there is only joy, family, community, and life. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, Ephesians says. Baptism is about the power of Jesus, church. The resurrection power, testified, glorified, signified in real life. Like, I, we, we always read the, the word of God as story, as history, but guess what? Our God is alive. Right now, he's doing a work in your church. Right now, he is moving in our kids' classrooms right now. And he is here, present, in the tank, in this place, because he is alive and doing a, a mighty work still in 2024 in YXE. Baptism is one of the greatest ways to testify and glorify to the resurrection power that you've encountered. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this is 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. You have been made new. Man, I love it. So we are going to celebrate today. I want to just share a couple of thoughts on sometimes some wrong thinking maybe we have on baptism. And maybe, again, you're new and this is helpful. Or maybe you've thought about getting baptized before, but some of these things have gotten in the way. You've maybe felt like for you, well, this is like a denominational thing, or then that would make me some sort of person in the church. This isn't about joining the church. This is about you and how you have already joined with Jesus. That's what this is about. It's about your salvation, and it's not, you know, a parental thing. It's not child baptism. We don't do that here. We do baby child dedications to the Lord with the family, and we do personal choice baptism through water because we believe it's biblical, and we believe it matters because it's a significant marker for you. You're deciding. You're saying yes. Some people feel like, well, it's the way to get saved. If I just get in there, everything will be okay. No, no, this is, again, the outward expression of what's already taken place in your heart with the Lord. Sometimes we feel like if I just get my life together, maybe then I'll go have a conversation with someone. I'll go talk to pastors. Like that's, I'm not ready yet to have that talk yet. I'm not ready to get in the tank. Church, if you were perfectly ready, I think he might just take you to heaven right now. <laughs> like, we're not perfect. That's not what this is about. It's not about being perfect enough to get in the tank. We need Jesus. He's the one that, the Bible says that when God looks at us, he sees the righteousness of Christ. He sees what Christ did on the cross. And through that righteousness, we are made righteous. We aren't righteous in our own right. We can't be clean enough to figure it out before the Lord. That's why we need Jesus. And so we're signifying a union with Christ and the cleansing power of him in our life. Are you hearing me? That's important to know. I think, you know, recently I had a birthday in the house and we bought a... Dairy Queen cake. Nothing wrong with Dairy Queen cake. Except that the icing, I think, is pure chemicals and stains everything. Have you noticed that? Anyone else? The red icing on the Dairy Queen cake? My goodness, that thing stains. And I, I, we were cleaning up and uh, the cake and it's melting and so it gets everywhere and I'm like wiping the surface, but a little bit of red Dairy Queen cake icing was on the cloth. So I'm doing this big, you know, S down, I look up, and I just see this red stain all on the island. I'm like, oh. And so I go over, and I get the cloth, and I wash it off, and I begin to wipe it again. And it did nothing else. Like, it's just this red snake on my island now that's not my house that I'm renting, which is awesome. And so 
then you grab like every cleaner you have in your house. Have you ever done this? And you went from this nice cloth to like this angry, like, you never do that? You, you didn't think your hand could literally move that fast? You're just, you're making weird faces, like, like you're getting really angry? Zoom in on this. No, I'm just kidding. It's weird. This is sometimes us where we're like, oh, I'm going to church. I better just, like, I've got to figure my life out. I just got to get, I got to figure it out. If I can just get myself better, if I can just stop, I'll just stop doing that thing I know I'm not supposed to be doing. I'll just stop saying this thing or going out with this person, whatever it is. I don't even, we, we, we think that it's about us cleaning ourselves. And if I can just get ready enough, then I'll get in the tank. What you need to get yourself ready is the saving grace of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel in your life that cuts to the heart. I didn't see a lot of preparation after they repented from Peter's sermon in Acts 2. I didn't see them go home and write an essay and come and say, I think I have a better understanding. Church, it's the saving grace and power of Jesus. If you could wash yourself, you wouldn't need him. But we do. We really need Jesus. Are you hearing me this morning? And so I encourage you, they may not feel, well, I'm not ready yet. Or I, I, I be, if you believe that Jesus saved you by his grace and mercy and nothing else, and you know and you're committed to that venture, that journey with him, that life and life to the full, then you have what you need to be baptized. And that's what these people understand is uh, it's Jesus that changed me. And you're going to see in a minute, and the team's going to get ready, we're going to show you a video of all the different testimonies of, of the people getting baptized today and everything that has happened. Because friends, Baptism is not some pedigree in the ladder of Christianity. It's about an encounter with Jesus Christ that has changed you in such a way that you're saying, he loves me and I know it, I love him and I want everyone else to know it. And so today we celebrate and we honor everyone getting baptized. I'll just say this. Baptism is an incredible next step when it comes to your faith. It can seem, you know, really daunting and large, but honestly it's, all the little steps with the Lord that keep making us a community that's trying to be more like Jesus. And I think for me, I even know in my life, when I got baptized, I wasn't 12, and I was, I was at a summer camp that I absolutely love, and I remember thinking, I know I need to get baptized, but I was a counselor at the time, and I was a cabin leader, and me and Trina were doing ministry there, and I felt like, I'm not going to get in the ocean and get baptized with a 13, I'm going to look like an idiot. Like, the counselor's not baptized yet? How silly is that going to be? At the end of the day, church, it doesn't matter when, if you're 50 or 75, if you love Jesus, if you know it's him who saves you, take that next step in your journey. What's holding you back? It's any of the things I, I mentioned. Don't let anything hold you back. Follow Jesus with everything you have. I want you to know, before everyone goes away for the summer, because I know you all do, Okay, June 23rd, we're going to have another Baptism Sunday. And it's your opportunity to take that step in your faith, in your journey with Jesus. Don't let anything get in your way. Your age, this, that. And I got baptized there as a counselor. And I'm so happy I did because I love Jesus. He loves me. At the end of the day, church, today's about life change. Amen? It's a testimony of 14 people who realize that Christ has done something for them. And so with that, I want to I bring up everyone who's getting baptized today. I want you to just come to the front. We want to pray over you and affirm you. Where are you at, baptism people? Come on, give them some love as they come. Yes, come on. Just right this way, but looking this way, okay? Can you guys just turn and look out at our church? Yeah, exactly. Follow Logan. Just like this. You guys are awesome. Would you pray with me over this incredible group of people? If you'd like to, you can stretch your arm out. You don't have to do that, but... Absolutely, let's reach out and pray over these people. Lord God, we thank you so much for the 14 lives that were surrendered, have surrendered their lives to you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this incredible group of people. God, but mostly we thank you for your work on the cross that has saved them, that has moved them, that has changed them from the inside out. We thank you today is Baptism Sunday because it celebrates and commemorates, Lord, 14 lives changed forever. Lord, 
intact with you and doing life with you, and I just pray today would be such a marker for them that they would never forget April 7th. It would always be marked on their heart that today is the day they showed the world of your goodness, of your grace, of your mercy. And so bless them as they prepare and get ready. Bless them as they go to the tank. And bless them far after, Lord. We don't just pray for a great day today. We pray for an everlasting, enjoyable faith into all of the years of their life, into their families and everything that they take, into their careers. Everywhere they go, would they be marked by the goodness of God. Holy Spirit, we love you and we thank you for all that you're doing today. It's in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. You guys go ahead, head through those doors. We'll go get ready. Follow Pastor Steve. As you go, I have a couple other things before we show a video today of their testimonies. I just want to say a couple of things. As the team gets ready, as they go and get prepared, I wanna share a couple things, okay? And this is really important for me, really important. Uh, we'll be doing worship as we baptize. Why do we do that? It's because this whole morning is about celebrating and joining with heaven of what God has done. And so the worship team, we're gonna, here's what's gonna happen, just practical notes for everyone here, some logistics, okay? The video is gonna show you incredible testimony. After that video is done, our worship team's gonna come out. They're gonna invite you to stand. We encourage you to worship. Worship as you would. See the, see the beauty in the tank and see the beauty in Jesus. But here's the thing. As every person comes out and as they go in the tank, you're gonna see your pastor talk with them and share with them, and they're gonna go down. And when they come up, this place has to sound like heaven. I'm inviting you to clap. I'm inviting you to it, okay? <laughs> In fact, do not do what I just did. That's lame. <laughs> but I am inviting you to encourage and, 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 and bring faith into the body of Christ today. I'm not asking you just to be loud. That's not the point of today. The point of today is to celebrate and commemorate with the people because the old is gone, the new has come, and they have been made new. And in that, we joyously celebrate and shout and worship and give God praise and thanks. And we do that by loving them and encouraging them. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. That, is a, that is a charge from your pastor today that you are allowed to woohoo in the house of the Lord. I cannot believe I said that. And, I, and then I said it again. I don't know. It's awkward. I apologize. I'm, you know, that way. So we love you guys so much. We're, we're going to affirm them today. We're going to give them all the joy. I want to encourage you one more time. For some of you, this is your next step. Maybe it's, maybe it's joining the prayer team. Maybe it's uh, starting a community group in your home. Maybe it's becoming a youth leader. There's many steps you could take. But for some of you, this is your next step. And so you're going to witness something. I know what's going to happen. It's going to speak to your soul. And then I'm going to tell you one thing, because I'm not going to be up on the stage again after this. After that happens, I want you to briskly walk... <laughs> to the Start Here booth, talk to someone, find Pastor Steve, someone, and tell them on June 23rd, I wanna get baptized. Don't wait. If you believe and repent, like, come and get, get baptized, because God wants to share that with you. Church, thank you so much for hearing me today, but more than that, listen to these incredible 14 stories, these testimonies of what God is doing in our church.
We'll do a light swell. I'd like to invite everyone to stand up as we celebrate so these the baptisms four. today, as they embrace the mercy of God.
truth Oh, what the mercy of God can do If you knew me then, believe me now Turn my whole life upside down Took the old and he made it new That's just what the mercy of God can do Now I'm alive to tell the story How I've overcome It's His goodness and mercy And the power of
like you there is none beside you open up my eyes